Hello, we are reading in Zohar La'am, Zohar for All. We are under the chapter Israel. You can ask questions on Kabda TV. Zohar La'am, volume 12, item 198, Israel, the Tree of Life. Israel, obviously we're not talking about the nation like people are used to be thinking like that in this world. Baal Sulam says it's, there's no nationality in the wisdom of Kabbalah. But it's those people, meaning those parts of the general soul of Adam Rishon that awaken by this general surrounding light to adhesion with the Creator, the purpose of creation. They feel themselves that this life isn't enough and they need to attain something beyond. And they already start their path towards the correction, which is from correcting themselves to knowing their root, the upper force. And in according to what they're drawn to, they're called Israel, Yeshakel, straight to the upper one, to that source, to that root, where they cascaded down from until the degree of this world. That is why all of the Torah, all of creation, is actually for Israel, for those souls that want to reach the purpose of creation, to realize their purpose. That's why Israel is so important. Each and every soul that yearns for the Creator to annul itself, to reach dvikut unification with Him. That's why it's written that the world was created for Israel. So only for those who awaken to purification, to reaching the state where they can be integrated in the upper force. That's why all of the wisdom of Kabbalah, all of the Torah, as we say, the light that reforms, is for them. Because actually, from all of the shattered will to receive, <clears throat> the, the parts where are awakening for correction and all those who aren't awakening yet, so those parts are called the nations. That's why the wisdom of Kabbalah divides all of reality into creator and created beings, and created beings also divides them into two, Israel, which are drawn to connection with the Creator and are willing to subjugate themselves, annul themselves, do anything needed just in order to reach adhesion with the Creator. And the nations of the world, those parts of the shattered soul, which still aren't awakening. And the important are the parts of Israel and all the Torah is written for them and all of reality is actually for them. That for now, they are performing the spiritual work and realizing the purpose of creation. Let's see what Zal writes about it, please. Israel, the tree of life. 198. Sons of life and nourishments are drawn to the lower ones, only from the middle pillar, called my son, my firstborn, Israel. He is also called a tree of life. The Zohar explains the matter of sons, life, and nourishments. The middle pillar, Israel, bestows upon divinity for the lower ones. The bestowals of life to divinity are the lower children of Israel who draw their lives from divinity 
and the giving of the secrets of the Torah for the lower ones is considered the nourishments of divinity. The prayer, which is her zivug with Zerampin, extends sons who are souls for the lower ones. It's written about her, and she said to Jacob, Give me sons. You can ask about anything we're reading about without waiting. If there's any questions, please ask. Please. Israel works alongside the Creator to correct the world. 280. It is known that the emanator started creation and established creation in a way that the children of Israel could finish it. As we study, you are in partnership with me. Meaning that even if creation seems broken, shattered, it is shattered in a certain way that by correcting it, meaning being drawn to the Creator, you can reach Him that the world is corrupted on purpose and we when we're about to correct it we have to correct ourselves and by that the world goes through a correction and then we reach that corrected world called the world of correction and correcting ourselves that's why I don't see the corrupted world, but corrupted on purpose for us to correct it by correcting ourselves. I started creation and you finish it. The emanator corrected Malchut only in the first nine in her, but he handed over to Israel the correction of Malchut de Malchut to correct her through work and keeping the first nine. Therefore, the whole of Israel's work before the end of correction is only in Malchut's first nine, which is considered the sorting of the 288 Rapach, Nitzitzim, sparks that were corrected by the emanator. The two temples above, the first He and the bottom He, and also below, both built in this manner. This is why they are considered to have been built by people, through the work of people, who were assigned with completing creation. And since the last 32 sparks belong to Malchut de Malchut, they have not been corrected yet. Thus from them come the Sitra Achra and the mixed multitude which coerce Israel to sin. And this is why the two temples were ruined. However, once the children of Israel sort out all 288 sparks that exist due to the breaking of the vessels, the Creator Himself will sort the last 32 sparks from Malchut to Malchut which are called the stone heart. As it is written, and I will remove the stone heart from your flesh. At that time, Malchut de Malchut, the last temple, will be established. It is written, if the Lord does not build a house, meaning prior to the end of correction, when the work was given to people, and by which the two temples were built, those who built it labor in vain because they were ruined. But after the people complete the correction to which they are assigned, the Creator will bring down the built-up Jerusalem, Malchut de Malchut, and the built-up temple, the interior of the Malchut de Malchut. At that time it will be an eternal structure for all eternity. Please? No questions? Yes. Here they say that the mixed multitude and the sitra achra are referenced. What's the difference between them? It's klipa. We don't have any feelings or discernments about it. 
We're not going to discern between them now. It's not time to correct them. So we treat them all as the general klipa. He writes here, all the work of Israel before the final correction is only in the first nine of Malchut. And not the 288. Sparks, can you explain what are the first, the correction of the first nine of Malchut? What is the manner of this correction? Malchut is actually the will to receive. The will to receive itself is flawed from receiving the light according to the condition of Tzimtzum Aleph, the first restriction, that the light can be accepted in the desire only to the extent of equivalence of form between them. The equivalence of form means that like the light has all the intention to bestow, also the Malchut has to be entirely to bestow. And then the light can fill the malchut when they have the equal intention. Their nature can never be equal. You can't change the nature. You can change the intention of the malchut. That is it. Malchut can change her own intention by being included in bina, in the desire to bestow. Malchut, when she incorporates with the desire to bestow of Bina, she receives the intention to bestow from her. But not entirely, because Malchut of Malchut can't integrate with the intention to bestow. She, she just can't. It's not according to the nature of the Malchut. That is why we it turns out that Malchut, that is integrating with all the qualities before her, can be similar to them in nine parts. But in the tenth part, she can't. That is why we get the division between Malchut and the first nine, between Malchut and Malchut de Malchut. The first nine of Malchut we can correct in order to bestow and receive the light in them in order to bestow. That means that in those qualities the created being can adhere to the Creator, but in Malchut Av Malchut we can't reach the intention to bestow. That's why what we're left with is only to restrict it from being used just not touch it. That is actually the work of Israel. And that's what we do. Yes. So the correction of the first nine, it's divided in, you can say it's divided into two. First the bestowal and reception for the sake of bestowal. Yeah, there's a lot of parts in using the first nine. There's Ibu, Yenika, Mochin. All the work we talk about in correcting the Malchut is in the first nine. And when we're in the beginning of the path, do we correct only the correct the intention? First we arrange only the intention, or is there any reception for the sake of a stole in the beginning? Of course, everything we talk about receiving in order to bestow is also speaking about the first nine. Never in Malchut of Malchut. That is in Gmal Tikkun. It happens from above in a special correction that you can't even explain how it happens. That's already an action that belongs to the Creator. We only work on the first nine, meaning on the qualities that Malchut itself can integrate with Bina. Bina symbolizes the qualities of bestow that come from Malchut. Okay? We talked about the world being built, uh, corrupted in order for Israel to correct it as partners with the Creator. The question is, in trying to correct the world, how can we discern what is necessary in this partnership of correction and what is not necessary? As we said, the first nine of Malchut are made for correction and equivalence of form and connection and dvekut and adhesion 
and Malchut of Malchut, no. In Gmar Tikkun, that's what it says, that even Malchut of Malchut, after all the corrections that were performed in the first nine, it will also be able to reach adhesion. That is a special action. I don't know how it works. It's not understood how she can integrate with a Bina or in some other way and that all the light in the first nine bestowed to them but that nature too of Malchut of Malchut will be able to get the intention to bestow. Okay, and so what is a adv- advice for those that can't discern these spiritual concepts? No malchut malchut, not the first nine. If we can yet, so we still can perform any actions practically for correction. So we need to study the Torah as a remedy to draw the light that reforms to bestow upon our desires we don't know how to sort them out what malchut is what's the first nine in there what's the malchut in there we don't know anything and it's not important because still it is all performed by the light that reforms so we just have to keep drawing it bringing it closer that's why our study is according to the extent of what we have how can we get closer to the light what do we have we need to gather ourselves in a physical connection to have a connection between us that in the corporeal worldly discernments that we have in our will to receive in order to receive even though it's not spiritual and only corporeal we still have to connect it and sort it out and adapt it (laughs) as much as we can to the spiritual form that we can build ourselves into ten spiritual sefirot as much as we can. We don't have them, true, but in the bodies we have ten. So let's try and make that resemble the spiritual ten sefirot. Like kids playing and being adults. We see in nature that with playing, with games, people grow from babies to children and children to youth and from youth to men. So it's possible to grow. Yes. And what is not worthwhile putting into this? What doesn't relate or pertain to this partnership during the time of preparation when there is no spirituality? We're trying to learn from what Kabbalists tell us. Everything that belongs to resembling the upper force, the Shekhinah, the parts of the Shekhinah, the connection in the Shekhinah and from that that's how we gradually reach correction to the extent that we try to be like those corrected parts like the corrected form to that extent from our corrected form our future form that already exists and is about to be revealed we are rewarded with bestow from that corrected form called the light that reforms and that bestow shines on us from that future corrected form that exists to our current corrupted form to the extent that we yearn to that future form to that extent we receive the light that reforms from there and it corrects us It organizes us. Yes? And relating to what (laughs) pertains to the specific discernments of drawing the light that reforms, what should the attitude be toward something that doesn't relate to the system of correction? If we're sure that our actions are in order to receive. So we need to see if we have no choice and we're in order to receive, but still we're trying as much as we can, even in the world to receive in order to receive, we're trying to perform actions, corporeal ones, that as if it's corrected, 
as if it's bestowing. What does that mean? Obviously, I'm entirely corrupted, but I hug the friend, I sing with him, I study with him, I do all kinds of actions that externally they are supposedly actions of correction, but internally, not yet. And that's how we still, in that, we still awaken the light that reforms. Okay, yes. Yosef from the Afula group asks, how do we ask from the light of the Zohar to ask to rise above a descent at the same time? There's a great deficiency to talk, to think about the success of the group, of the Rav, about everything. How do I not think about myself during a descent? That's the whole matter of the prayer that I have to ask for the others and not myself because the demand on myself ruins the soul, but to the extent that I can, even mechanically, even without a desire, let's say sometimes I'm in an ascent, sometimes descent, doesn't matter. If I try, even with no desire and no intention and no impulse towards it, to still ask in a mechanical way, just voice these words, and I feel my heart completely not going with me, that I want to think about myself, but still I'm speaking as if I love the others. So we have to see that those actions specifically that obviously they're against our desire if we even externally physically that do actions that this world allows us that's why we're purposely in here not in the world of desires but in the world of deeds if we perform that we're still advancing towards correction meaning we have to start from the most external form that's given and then these actions belong to divinity let's say I'm entirely in order to receive and I don't want anything and but I come to the lesson I sit with the friends I do something that I'm willing to do with my body even though my heart and mind don't agree and I don't want anything but still I forcefully do it with my body that is also concerted that also draws the light that reforms just how in our world children grow with the games we also grow with the games that's why it's very important in everything whatever society does. That's why Kabbalists write that. And we need to organize our life in a way, and families, and conversations, and meals, and everything. Because all of it is done by the light. Okay? Good. Well... Keep going. Item 235 turns its head back. 235. The great Rabbi Hia went to Rabbi Shimon and he saw a great fire that was going on in the house. Rabbi Hia said, he heard, a vo- he heard a voice from behind the fire. Every time they cr- yearning to the Creator, the Creator not, will not go and not walk away, but run like a gazelle or a young heart. 2.36. No other animal in the world 
does what the gazelle or the stag does. When it runs, it turns its head slightly to the place from which it came. It always turns its head back. And this is what Israel said. God Almighty, if we cause you to depart from among us, may it be that you will run like the gazelle or the young stag. This is because it runs and turns its head back to the place it had left, the place where it was before, and left it and fled from there. This is the meaning of the words, Yet in spite of this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them, nor will I so abhor them as to destroy them, breaking my covenant with them. And one more thing, the gazelle sleeps with one eye and is awake in the other eye. This is what Israel said to the Creator, do as the gazelle does, for he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Meaning Israel that can't come closer to the Creator on their own and need His help, so they ask, watch on us constantly. And if you move away, so do it in, a, in the manner that we'll be able to recognize when you move away that you're still doing it on purpose meaning that you're moving away and sh turning your face back, that will feel that by you moving away, also attitude towards us, that by this you're trying to bring us closer. That your face is moving away, but it is still turned to us. And that will help us even by you moving away, we'll be able to aspire after you. Yeah. Rav, we read in the sources sometimes that there are situations when the sources say that the creator is taken from them also in the in Egypt and in Purim, we say this, what is the state of, as if there's a disconnection of the deer not turning its head? There is no disconnection, but that the Creator, and only the Creator is working towards us in all kinds of ways, from the form of Him Himself until a form of the Pharaoh itself. And between those two extreme opposites, you have all kinds of other forms that come in order to awaken us to adhere to Him, none else besides Him, good and benevolent. And that needs to pull us ahead. So if He moves away, we have to see that that he's drawing us with that. There is no action on behalf of the Creator that isn't aimed, that isn't intended in order to pull us behind him. Yes. I'm going to try to connect that a little bit to the Congress that we just had. There was a sensation that, at least I felt, and in the 10 we talked about it a little bit, that something happens without we, us feeling it, that it happens. It's like something manifests underneath, and we're totally unconscious of it, but still there's a sensation from afar that something does happen. Correct. Is that similar to what we're talking about? What do you mean similar? It's always happening like that. The Creator is working on us on two levels, let's say, two layers. One layer is that we feel that something's happening with us, and in a more inner layer, that something is happening like beneath the what we can see, under the surface. And in this way, it gradually brings us to the consciousness that spirituality has two layers. 
that also by a person being activated and the person's working and the creator's working on us and also supposedly activated on our behalf there's what's happening above the surface and below the surface always and we need to get used to it and we have to start seeing things in such a way that well complex let's say because then you start seeing vessels in the way that they work and a system that activates them the vessels which are two forms like just a, a child he doesn't understand what's going on with people behaving in a certain way we look at people and we can see why it's happening what it's happening for what's the inner meaning we see the depth behind relationships between people and a child whatever he sees externally that for him is the whole world all of life no more than that right for us no we understand that relations between people that the child can't see but we can see in our eyes in our brain in our heart in our understanding that is the main thing that's how it is in spirituality in a way that stands out much more that there are actions and these actions the whole world actually is in motion but we discover that system that's activating the world that let's say the average normal regular person in this world doesn't recognize it no he doesn't recognize it for him all these things are as if they don't exist they don't no he doesn't understand what's going on you see above the surface people the way they behave between them and that's enough for them even if it's not enough how can they know what's going on in the world if they knew the reason what forces are working what they need to do they'd behave differently but they would behave according to their will to receive that's why all of the upper system that activates the people between them it's all concealed why in order for them to start behaving according to their desire their desire just like the concealed system that they will build such ways of relations between them just like the concealed system and to the extent that they make efforts and want to build such relations so that concealed system is revealed in them and actually lets them behave in such a way that's our work that is called to invite the light that reforms that we need to make efforts in the relations between us in such a way that that concealed system will start revealing itself according to our efforts yes I think that you talked about it in a very revealed way during the Congress and I wanted to ask about this thing it's like this situation a state in which you feel that something's acting on you maybe it's similar to the an embryo and something acts on us we don't know exactly we don't identify exactly what's influencing us we're like sub it's like subconscious there's this um, clarification in the 10 we don't have to scrutinize we have to look at the book what the teacher explains what we see that is written in all the articles and implement these things as much as we try we don't have to be precise we have to try to try if we know and don't do it's worse than not knowing and not doing 
What we're trying to implement, even like a child who doesn't know exactly what, but he's trying, and from that we're activating our prayer, that's the most beneficial. That's it. That's our pure, clean work. Yes. Yeah. It's not very clear why, because what is the benefit of, of addressing the Creator when the system is concealed, if the, if the address is broken? It doesn't matter. You want it. That addressing the Creator, it expresses your desire. I want to do this. I'm trying to be good. I want to do an action that is closer to you. There is nothing more pleasant in the eyes of the upper one than the lower ones trying to be like him. They can't, but they're trying. Specifically, the gap between them, between the what's desired and what we actually have. That gives contentment to the Creator. How do I look at a child trying and trying and trying to be as me, but it's not working for him, and he's asking me to help him, that I'll explain how to be like me. Sometimes we talk about the uh, Kabbalists looking at the system in a very clear, precise manner. And they remove all of the forms that are incorrect. They, they warn uh, they warn students against making the wrong request that could possibly be harmful but here we say that no even though the system is hidden and your addressing of the creator could become totally wrong don't worry about it just try anyway it's it sounds like a contradiction don't understand what you're talking about does anybody understand can you explain it what is the benefit of an egoistic addressing of the Creator when he's hidden? What are you asking for? I'm asking. What? First of all, from who am I asking? I'm asking what? Why are you ruining my question? I'm sorry, what am I asking? I am asking strength to work, to be in bestow. To be in bestow? You're already giving contentment for asking for forces to be and bestow, meaning to resemble the Creator. I'm asking for my own sake, though. So is that being in bestow? Bestowing in order to receive? That I would have the strength to be in bestows, for myself to have the strength. Okay, what do you need forces to bestow for? Because by that I bring Him contentment. So you want to bestow. So why is that not good? So why is that not false? I don't know if it's false or not, but you're asking for it, even if it's a lie. And you don't know if it's a lie or not, so that's enough for your degree. I know it's a lie, though. Oh, if you know, that's also good. So you know it's a lie, and you're still turning to the Creator and asking for forces of bestow, even though you still can't ask it from Him correctly, right? Because you're not in the state of bestowing, but you're asking not forces to bestow. And you're thinking that by the forces of bestow, even though you're asking for it because it's good for you, right? It's good. It's still... You're continuing the help from above. We start from nothing, the whole process. That's why the main thing is to pray all day. There's no limitations about that. If you turn to the Creator, there's no limitation in that. But the most beneficial is through the group. But even without a group and alone, it still works. But what? Not in a direct way, but maybe in a surrounding way. 
it brings you to recognition of evil, why you're doing it, and so on. But still, it brings you to special turnaround. But still, you advance. You see in Almaty, there's still a lot of friends there. They're not scattering away yet. Good for you. And this is better than sit and do nothing, being preferable, asking in this state when you don't even know. And sometimes it's better not to ask. Always turning to the Creator is better. And after you locked yourself on Him, none else besides Him in good and benevolent, you are trying more to be more and more spiritual. But first of all, lock yourself on the upper force. Okay? Okay, let's keep going. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. What is asking through the ten or through the group that you mentioned earlier? What is that thing? I'm, I just don't understand through the group, through the ten. What is that? Do you understand what you're asking about? We're talking about this for two or three years, I don't know, something. And you're asking, as if you never heard about it, or for the first time. I didn't hear the first time. What does through the group mean? If I want to come closer to the Creator on myself, I don't exist. Towards the Creator, only ten sefirot exist. That's it, ten sefirot. No creation, but ten sefirot, which are connected between one another. Havaya. That's why if you want to turn to the Creator, you need to turn to Him through those ten sefirot, because you are in them. That is why we need to integrate in a group equally, subjugate myself, see them as the Creator as much as I can, depict that, to integrate in them, and ask for the group to ascend. Because if I'm asking, I'm the Malchut. Malchut can't ask for herself. That is called Malchut of Malchut. But only for the first nine, which in them the Creator is revealed. So I'm asking for the friends that the Creator will be revealed in them. I am willing to restrict myself, not to accept, receive anything, and let the upper light go from me to them. That is called that I'm praying the prayer of the many. Then, by that, I can turn to the Creator. My point is restricted. Their points are open. And I am asking for the Creator to bestow from me the light towards the group. And because I'm asking and want to bestow the light upon the group, that is called that the Elder takes twice that still the light comes through me and in this way I can fill myself even though I'm trying to fill them, the friends. That's it. And in that way, each and every one who asks if his request is truly for the others, so he is filled first from that same pipeline that is going through him. Yes. Rav, I'm familiar with everything that you said. It's not what I'm, a question of how to work. The question is that if I'm in this state, am I supposed to feel something or am I supposed to do it without feeling anything? You need mechanically just to try. To try and awaken such states, whether they exist or not, that's not important. You have to act in them as much as you can till a feeling comes. So you're saying at the end of the day, a sensation, there will be a sensation, it's just a process. Yes. Keep going. 
The Creator and His Sons, item 360. It is written of man that He made man in the image of God. It is also written, you have made him a little lower than God. If people so cherish their deeds, they are lower than the dust of the well, for they are lowered by the klipot that cling to the dust of Malchut, called the well. How will they come to pump out abundance from the well? He chose the upper ones, the angels, and he chose Israel. He did not call the upper ones sons, but called the lower ones sons. As it is written, you are the children of the Lord your God. And he called them children, and they called him father. As it is written, for you are our father. And it's written, my beloved is mine, and I am his meaning he chose me, and I chose him. Well, we learn it in a lot of places that who chooses who, the Creator in Israel, or Israel and the Creator, and there's no... As if there's no answer here. Why? Because to the extent that we choose the Creator, the Creator chooses us. There's things that come from him and things that come from us first. Yes. It's like a father and son. I'm sure the son is a result of the father on one hand. On the other hand, the, the, fa- the kids has to take it upon themselves and see that it's their father and then they can reach him. Keep going. To lead the flock, 371. A psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, my shepherd. As the shepherd leads the flock to a good grazing site, a lush grazing site in a place of springs, and strengthens and straightens their walk with righteousness and justice, so does the Creator. As it's written, He makes me lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside the still waters, He restores my soul. Meaning, really concerned on taking us through all the states we have to go through in a gradual, nice way and keeping us correctly. Keeping us from our nature, the will to receive, he created in such a opposite form from him. Okay? Yes. After this Congress, I gathered a few discernments that during the Zohar are are pretty interesting. If there's some fear that I feel during the day, do I feel that some mutual fear? What do we need to do during this time? Some action, some prayer. First of all, it reminds you that you're lacking connection. If there's fear, it's a lack of connection. Fear comes when we have light that can't find the vessel. And then it stands above. And we think it's pleasant. It's not pleasant. The light that stands with no vessel, it's really threatening, it's um, scary. It takes us out of a calmness. That's why we have to think right away how we can complete that vessel. He's reminding us we're lacking vessels. Lacking vessels is because there's no connection. Only in the connection we can replicate, restore. Yeah, to 
restore or replicate our vessels. Why? Because it's 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. That's how this reproduction happens. Like giving birth to new vessels. So you're saying to to pray to create new kilim? To pray, to ask, to awaken friends, to also do something. Even though it's you who woke up. Our awakening is always through unpleasant feelings. Fear, helplessness, no mood. From complete apathy to all great anxieties. In all that spectrum of unpleasant feelings. Yes? So why essentially... There are many times when I try to pray and I fail. I don't have the strength, I don't feel like it. It's like I sit and try to do it and I'm enabled, unable to do it. Well, that's okay. And then as soon as I leave, then I can put out a prayer. Why can't you make a prayer? Because you're lacking a desire. You're shown the upper light is standing before you, and you have to try and find what is he doing in me, because he is the first, right? So he's showing you that you're lacking desire. That's why your prayer is not a prayer. It's, I understand I'm lacking something, but I don't feel an inner impulse. I feel an inner impulse, but still I it's not clear what kind of impulse it has to be and what impulse I have, I don't know, and so on and so on. Meaning it's scrutiny. Lack of scrutinizing the deficiency. Yeah, more. When I pray for a friend, directly, should that prayer also go through the ten? It's desired to scrutinize everything through the ten. If you disconnect from the ten, you stop existing in spirituality. How can it be that you exist if it's not for the ten? No such thing. Less than a ten, it means that the force of shattering is working on you and disconnecting you from the Creator, and you're behind the screen, and that's it. Just disconnected. A part that has no ability to live a spiritual life. Spiritual life is a ten. And then from the zero degree to 100% degree. But at least in every degree, whatever, always a 10. But even though we're explaining this theoretically, it doesn't matter. Even if you... Even if you can't see yourself in a 10 now, still keep turning to them, keep requesting somehow. Even though it says that by this a person destroys himself and it's better not to pray, we're in a state where we have no choice and we're still... It's good, even if we pray in that way. And afterwards, very quickly, we reach prayer through the tent. Sometimes I catch myself, after I thank him, it's easier to pray. Can you say that gratitude is prayer before prayer? So you're not in a deficiency anymore. You have some kind of connection with the Creator. You have some nice attitude, and from that you're already, you feel all right. That means that you are building the connection to and from above. The Creator gave you that connection.
Right. Here I'm trying to figure out what a prayer is before a prayer. Is gratitude, can you say that gratitude is prayer before a prayer? Rough. No. With gratitude you have no deficiency. There is a deficiency to, pr to think, but it's not the same deficiency for the correction of Kilim. No. Because immediately afterwards, question, I feel like I have strength to ask for the ten, for unity, and so on. Rough. That's right, because you have a good foundation. But this is what we're doing as well this is what we're doing in prayer when the great Kabbalists of the Knesset the ancient Knesset wrote to us that we are that we always begin with gratitude Baruch Atah, blessed are you and so forth to prepare ourselves in order for us even asking afterwards for correction these corrections are only to come closer and then to bestow there needs to be there needs to be gratitude in the beginning and in the end and in the middle a request like a sandwich two pieces of bread and something in the middle the question that I understand but what is the prayer before the prayer then Rav prayer before a prayer is usually when we feel deficiency but that deficiency is not processed and by that deficiency we need to find true deficiencies and for them to pray let's say prayer before a prayer when I come to the lesson and at the lesson I'm always praying with the light that reforms that I need it to correct me that I remain entirely but on the way to the lesson before the lesson as it's called, I don't feel any uh, deficiency. I just need to let the reforms. But I arrange myself in such a way that I'm uh, incorporated in the environment and everything that's written, and then I awaken myself to realize that I do need the reforming light. For that, I need to come to the lesson, and not just because it's a lesson that I have to be there during certain hours, and I have to be in my tent and so forth. That's it. So when I ask that I'll have a deficiency to come to the lesson, then during the, the during the time of the lesson, that I would have a deficiency to draw the reforming light. Question. So can we say that this is a prayer, this the egoistic part for myself? Oh, uh, that also can be. Yes, that can be. And it could be not. Could be that in prayer before prayer, I'm asking to have a connection with the friends, to have love of friends, that I want to feel how they're suffering, what they want. That's prayer before prayer. And prayer after that, that's towards the Creator. Thank you. Okay. Sowing seed, item 67. Happy are you, so beside all the waters, who send out freely the ox and the donkey. Happy are Israel, whom the Creator desires more than all the nations and brought them close to Him. As it is written, the Lord your God has chosen you. It is also written, For the portion of the Lord is his people, Jacob, the lot of his inheritance. And Israel adhere to the Creator, as it is written, But you who cling unto the Lord your God. Meaning, there's a unique attitude between people that a certain Rashimo awakens in them and they awaken towards adhesion with the Creator, 
And according to that, obviously, the Creator treats them differently according to the attitude between light and vessel compared to people that still haven't awakened those Rishimot and then the Creator's attitude towards them is like a general unscrutinized will to receive. That's why it's a very big difference. These are called Israel. These, for now, are called the nations. 68. They are righteous before him because they sow beside all waters. They sow for righteousness, meaning they raise man to extend mochin to malchut. So she will be called tzedaka, righteousness. Since without mochin, she's called tzedek, justice. Without hay, as it is written, he who sows for righteousness for your mercy is great above the heavens. Above the heavens is also called beside all waters. Above the heavens, this is the next world, Bina, which is above the Anpin called heavens. And Israel sow a seed and raise man beside all waters, Bina, to extend Mochin onto Malchut. So she will be called Tzedakah. Israel Israel were enslaved by all nations so that the world would rise through them. 286. Israel are equal to all the other nations of the world. As the rest of the nations are 70, Israel are 70. As it is written, all souls of the house of Jacob that came into Egypt were 70. And the ruler of Israel is as though he rules over the whole world, entire world. 287. This means that Israel are 70, as it is written, and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased and abundantly and multiplied and became mighty exceedingly and extraordinary. Thus, there are seven degrees here, and each degree consists of ten, thus seventy. After that it is written, and a new king arose over Egypt, meaning that because of its dominion over Israel, which are the opposite of seventy nations, was regarded a new king. 288. Israel were enslaved by all the nations so that the world will rise through them, since they are opposite the whole world. It is written, In that day shall the Lord be one, and His name one. And as the Creator is one, Israel are one. As it is written, One nation in the land as the same of the Creator is one and spreads in 70 names, Israel are one and spread into 70. Questions? Well, we understand that resemblance, that it can't be that Israel will be less than 70, because they have to integrate in the 70 nations, that the 70 nations will rule over them, and then Israel can come out to a connection with the Creator and then pull all the nations behind them. Yes, Nasi. Can I ask about something that happens after the Zohar lesson that has to do with it? After the Zohar? Yes, something we do with the materials. Ask if we can do it technically after the lesson about 9 p.m. We send like a question of a friend. Is it right to do it? Or should we send something that we're just reading the Zohar? Because somebody that wakes up in the to the lesson in the next day, Rav, I don't understand. Can you explain this to me? After the lesson, we get to our phones, apart from the Zohar lesson. Yeah, Nessie's team sends apart. 
short or long part. Usually it's like a few questions in a row. It's a minute or two. So not Bala Sulam Rabash. So that's the question. Should I ask a question of a friend or a part of Bala Sulam or Zohar? Or it's a recording. It's not reading. It's audio. It's for someone who hasn't come. Someone who didn't come. When they wake up in the morning, they push play and they can listen as a preparation for the morning lesson. I don't know. How do you choose according to your experience? You already got it a few times. So is it better to listen to part from the lesson or better to listen to what else? A reading, I guess. Read or listen. What do you send, audio or video? Usually we send audio of a friend's question. A question and an answer. Okay. Still, it brings them into some kind of thought. And that's how they go to sleep. But when they wake up, let's say somebody who... So let him listen to that. If it's a question and an answer that is like a package, a, that's good. That already gives them a push to think about something. Okay. Well, everybody's calm. Keep going. The future of the Holy Land, Israel, is to water the entire world. Sorry, the future of the Holy Land, Israel, is to water the entire world, 15. A psalm for David, the land is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. The land is the Holy Land of Israel, which is destined to be watered by the Creator and to be blessed with Him first. And from it, the whole world will be watered. The world and those who dwell in it is the rest of the lands which drink from it. Rav. Well, that's clear. Israel is called Lirosh, the head, and always the Rosh is what of the Potsuf is what connects to the light, resembles itself to the light. The Rosh has no vessels of reception, but only intentions. And according to the intentions in the Rosh, we can check as much as the Creator's intention and the created being's intentions are in equivalence to one another. That is called that direct light is clothed in reflected light, reaches Zivug Daka when, when there's a checking with the reflected light, and they can already start organizing the reception of the lights in order to bestow from Pederosh and below. And then, after the Zivug Daka, it comes to implementation. And only by implementing from Pe and below when they receive the light in order to bestow that upper light is called that the vessel receives. That's why Israel, when they are in that action, and through that action they fill the vessels of the world, they are called Rosh. That's why everything depends on them. That first they get the upper abundance, and then they can add the vessels of the world to them and bestow to them, bring it to them. That's why also today the world that is in such a crisis needs Israel to reach contact with the Creator, with the upper lights, give the Rosh do their job, and the nations can also 
receive because it's going to be clarified that Israel truly cannot perform any correction that's specifically in connecting the nations of the world when they receive their aviut so they can take that aviut and turn it into pureness by the light and a masach and in that way receive in order to bestow and in in the rosh and pass it on to the vessels of reception which the nations of the world which is in their goof and what we talk about that Israel have it's only in order to perform the correct actions to the nations of the world that in Israel themselves there is no vessels of Achap all of their vessels of Achap are only either from the shattering in order to correct and be able to be the Rosh or that receive them from the nations of the world that already connect them after the shattering for correction yes Question of Kosin from Yash. How can we feel the Zohar lesson correctly when we have many problems in our personal life? Rav, there are no personal problems. As much as each one is dwelled in his own problems and the Creator, thank God, doesn't let go of a person, and really takes care of him in all kinds of ways. He doesn't save. He doesn't save up on him. But along with that, we have to understand there are no personal problems. As much as it seems personal to us, doesn't work like that. It is all in order to bring the vessel to correction. I'm talking about people in error system, that they all exist in order to bring the general vessel towards correction. That's why there is no calculation with the person itself. Who is man? What calculation can you have with him? No. Spiritual? No. Only only for the whole world meaning if I receive blows, problems it's all so I'll hurry up and correct myself because the world needs my vessels that's how it is that's it, yes Alexander from Moscow Alexander from Moscow. In what is the revelation of the Creator expressed in the friends? What do I see in the corrected way? In the corrected way, I see in all the friends that they are the holy divinity and everything is in my observation that I have corrected. Now I can see it. I have nothing else to do but that. And in this way, I can see if I've corrected myself or not. If the entire group and all of reality through it, I can see him as the Shechina. So, I corrected myself. Yes, Vlad. Give it back. The feeling is that we're really in the passage between two worlds, one and the second. And the biggest push happens in a Congress. Rav, that's why we're thinking about having a Congress every month. Next time it'll be in Rome, then in Germany, then in uh, Georgia. Yes? In what does this passage depend on? Like the fetus has to go through it in a special way. In what does our success depend on? How should we do it that it will really be quick and successful? How to make it quick and successful? Uh, hurry up the birth. 
you're a doctor, you understand, speed up the birth. There's a lot of uh, causes, though, Rav, right? But in these causes, we have to understand that we have to awaken it by prayer, connection between us, and also understand that the connection between us is also prayer. We can't do anything but ask, demand. Well, let's sit and hug us, hug each other strongly. What are we going to do? Another meal? What? No. It's all external. The inner connection we need to attain in order to be a ten comes from the light. That's why, except for a request for that, towards the Creator, you have nothing else to do. And it's written, I wish they prayed all day. If we can constantly be in a demand, constantly, constantly, as much as we can, more and more, all of us together, through the friends, that is the whole thing. And a person gets heaviness of the heart and when he feels it he feels it personally that it's the creator awakening him poking him pressuring so he has to understand that it's all towards society he wants to save himself from it it's also towards society he wants to bring it to society so everybody can use it correctly good so he overcomes his own concern and puts it as the concern of the group, as a prayer. Nothing more. That is speeding up birth. For now, it seems to us that this world is stronger, that all the disturbances that people get, they, it feels stronger. In order for you to request better from the Creator, and that has to become the request, that has to be the help for the birth of everything that is revealed. The Creator can give you such disturbances and problems in work, in taxes that you didn't pay, in the police that I don't know suddenly. It can come to you in all kinds of ways, on the streets and with people, your children, schools, doesn't matter what. It's all in order to speed up your prayer. How can it be that each one in the tent can help one another, that every problem that awakens, it's just labor pains? Talk about it. Talk about it. Nothing to do. To actually just speak about it, just like that. Yes, yes, a person who is awakened in all kinds of personal ways at home, with his wife, with his kids, with all kinds of problems at work, in his profession. No, it awakened him to turn to the Creator. For the friends, love, for the group, yes, and for the world. We can't forget that we also have to include the world in this. So we should also pay attention to what's happening in the world. Love. We have to think that our correction doesn't end by us wanting to be connected to the Creator. We want to bring the whole world to the Creator. If you only think of your ten, you're closed into your ten, so you're praying for yourself because the ten is you. If you want to truly reach a more true prayer, you have to include the whole world in it, the suffering of the world. That by that, that you want to include the world that's suffering by this you want to cleanse the suffering of the creator towards the world that the creator is suffering 
as if the Creator gave you the opportunity to correct the world, and until you do that, the world and the Creator are suffering. Just like in the book of Job, that the Creator tells them, what do you think, that uh, sorry, in Yonah, the prophet, that in Inveh there's so many women and babies and elders and they're all suffering. What do you think, that, that I won't take them into consideration, that I'm going to let them go? Just you wanted to do to them and run away from your role, from your task? That's why we can't forget about that. We have to understand that if we don't include it, the whole world in our prayer and try to feel the suffering of the whole world, even people that hate us and are against us, it's a concealment. That's why it happens in this way. We still need to love everybody and to want to bring the whole world to correction. And then you will be desired in the eyes of the Creator. That's why I'm saying it again. As much as we're cons being concerned of our internal work, don't cancel the external dissemination. We have to continue it in something. Not, but not like I'm hearing here that we're trying to shut down dissemination and cancel everything completely. It's as if we're throwing away the main part. Because towards the Creator, we're doing the correction for the whole world. If you don't want to disseminate, you don't want to take it into consideration, so what are you here for? You are the Rosh, the head, towards them. You have to be the adapter, the pipeline. That's why in such an attitude towards the world, oh, so the Creator treats you. That's exactly what happens in the story of Yonah, the prophet, Jonah. That's what happens. Clear? Okay, go and rest. Yeah.